begin. Hello, everybody. Uh, we are live, I think, on Twitch. I have that pulled up. Um, so uh, for everyone watching, I think we're just, people are just barely tuning in. Um, my name is Ryan Burningham. I'm the CEO of the Virtual Athletics League. Uh, we are running today the panels. Uh, it's called uh, Real Sports in VR, uh, Athletes in the Virtual World, Real Sports in VR. Um, and this is one of our panels for the VR Winter Games. So this year we had a $15,000 price pool, uh, around 20-ish plus almost 30 studios involved this year. Um, and uh, so I'm going to introduce everybody for our guest today. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining. Uh, by the way, it is two more days until the official end of winter. Uh, seems kind of funny, but uh, the sun is shining out today. Uh, but the official end of winter is March 20th. Uh, so, uh, but thanks, guys, for joining today. Um, Alex, you're in Spain, correct? Nope, not anymore. I'm in Belgium. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, Belgium, nice. Okay, it's confusing with my name, but I built it there. <laughs> no, that's and, great. Uh, I always see in the Discord that way. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, anyway, let's do quick. Uh, let's do quick intros. Um, and uh, I just like to hear, like, you know, what's your background? Uh, what game do you represent? Uh, what fit? What uh, you know, training app do you represent? VR. Uh, you know, briefly brought, brought you to this. Um, and so uh, let's go uh, around my screen. So, if, Greg, you want to go first and just kind of do a quick intro. Sure, sure. Well, hello from Vienna, Austria. Um, nice to see you all. Um, I'm the founder of VR Motion Learning. And what we have done is we have, we have brought tennis into the virtual world. So we converted tennis as you play on the real court into VR. And so you put your headsets on and you play tennis as you would play on the real court with all the ball physics, all the motions like on the real court. And that brings you to the to the to the stage where you can do training sessions, where you can play online, where you can match your friends. And we were going to start the, the Super League end of the year. So uh, a lot of online gaming, but it is a serious educational game. So our goal is, and that's why we called motion learning, is that you can learn a certain technique, a certain motion um, in the ideal way. So we compute the the ideal move based on your individual biomechanics and we compare that, your forehand against the ideal forehand. And we have a, a didactic system bringing you step by step into the ideal technique. So that's the end game. Um, so it's a, a serious educational game what we're doing. Very cool. Yeah, there's uh, very serious uh, biomechanics. Anytime you hear that word, plus VR, you know, it's very serious. And so um, really, really excited to see that. And there's a lot of cool stuff capping up for uh, VR motion learning this year. So thanks. Um, Alex, do you want to go next? Sure. I have to warn you, though, I hear my son coming. <laughs> I might not realize that we're doing <laughs> no, this. No worries. <laughs> we're all in the age of uh, Zoom and uh, coronavirus, yeah. so cats and kids show up uh, much more often on these calls, so we're all good. Yeah, so uh, I guess I'm a little bit different because I'm not part of the people that have created the game. Uh, I'm here representing 11 Table Tennis mm -hmm. VR. Um, in a way, it's similar to what Gregory is doing, of course, but I'm, it started way, way sooner and I think with a, a slightly smaller team because I, I've seen a little bit what you guys are doing and it seems you have a very... Uh, big approach, like you, the things that you're using and the people that you're involving. Um, but it's been growing over the last four, five years. Yeah, and, and your your background is uh, mostly in real life table tennis, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a real life table tennis player. I've been playing since I was six years old. Um, when I when I tried um, virtual reality for the first time, I realized right away that it had a lot of potential for for uh, table tennis as well. And then when I tried table tennis, even way back with Windows Mixed Reality, I was already impressed. Like I could already use it in real life to get better. But then I still had to, how do you say it? Um, you could focus maybe on, you could get better at focus or footwork, but maybe not the strokes yet, right? Sure. But now we're at a totally different point. Like the Quest 1, it was better because there was no wires, but then there was a little bit of lag still. But now there's face sync for Quest 1 and Quest 2. And now it's one of the best options. There's no cables. There's very little lag. Um, totally, it's still and, not perfect. There's and still you do uh, you do a bit of uh, coaching, right? 
as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so for coaching so, for real life and an eleven table tennis, who knew such a thing existed, right? Yeah, yeah. I started doing it in in VR uh, during the lockdown, mostly also to show that there's a market for it. Right? Okay. That, uh, there's because I mean you can reach everybody in the whole wide world, right. and uh, having like a semi-professional professional, professional uh, table tennis coach be able to help you out anywhere you live, it's just amazing. Yeah, that is truly amazing. That's really awesome. Uh, Lucas. Yeah. So, so yeah, so I'm with uh, walkabout mini golf. We're probably the, the least qualified to talk about the things that a lot of the other folks are talking about on this panel, just because we're on the, in the much more casual space. We've tried to make everything as realistic as possible. Um, but I think that in general, we're probably aiming more at a casual audience and we're trying to get the physics and everything very, very realistic. There are a lot of people who play very, very seriously. Um, but I think that just the nature of mini golf, because it's not a fixed, you know, and uh, theoretically, other than, you know, some slight variations in like whether you're playing on clay or grass on in real tennis or probably some very slight variations and some things in, uh, in uh, table tennis the courses really define sort of like what is, you know, how you play mini golf. So other than the the actual act of putting, which again, we've tried very hard to get the physics accurate on, um, it's really down to learning each course and learning the the tricks and the trick shots and sort of some of the strats that you can do to to basically, yeah, to try to, try to um, get the best score you can, but it's much more course specific than it is uh, specifically on your physical technique. For sure. And, uh, you know, hopefully there's one day a mini golf course on the moon. Uh, that would be pretty dope. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, but that's, what's great about VR is it's both for casual, right. And mm -hmm. like that's, you know, people walk about connects people all over. Uh, um, but then we also have some super serious players, you know? Oh yeah. There's so. some, there's some very serious players and there are a couple, um, I know inner princess, uh, who is one of the, I think he took the number three spot in the tournament. Mm -hmm. I know he's done a ton of strategy videos that go through each course and sort of like, here's some of the approaches, but it's a much more of a strategy, um, strategy for the course as opposed yeah. to, um, yeah. as opposed to, yeah, exact physical. Yeah. Training. Talking, talking about inner princess, uh, I know him as well because he is also a good player in uh, in eleven table tennis. We do actually. I've I've yeah. um, I've heard that there's a lot of folks who cross over between yet. Yeah, yeah, I do. Eleven well. and I also yeah. play uh, play your game. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I actually I still need to pick up eleven table tennis because I've been mm -hmm. wanting to. I've sent. I'm I've been up until now mostly a solo dev. I've added a couple of people to the team. So sadly, I have like I am have played an embarrassingly few number of VR games, and especially in the last year and a half. So, but yeah, I cannot wait to to maybe we'll, maybe we'll have to get a, a game going where we can play each other's games back and forth. Sure, that'd be that'd, that'd be, be rad. Awesome. Mm -hmm. We can we can all jump into walk about mini golf after this, and then we can all do some tennis coaching and eleven table tennis. So that'd be uh -huh. pretty awesome. Sure. Um, and then Lucas, what what was your background before this? Uh, so my background is actually in film, um, animation specifically. So I I'm an animation director. I've done a couple of short films. Uh, probably the one that people know the best was one called Pigeon Impossible, um, and that was the basis for Spies in Disguise, the Blue Sky film that came out like a year year and change ago with uh, Will Smith and Tom Holland. Um, but yeah, so mostly in the animated feature space and our studio has been largely animation. We've done a couple of games, but they've kind of been a small little side thing. And then Walkabout in particular kind of became my quarantine project where I just needed something to keep my hands busy. So yeah. I, I, I dedicated a solid like six months of pretty much full time just focusing on, on getting that ready before the launch. So, um, but yeah, so, you know, animation games, there's a lot of similarities, but uh, um Obviously, yeah, two totally different beasts. So I still feel like I'm very new to the games space. Yeah, and that's that's a pretty interesting, you know. But we've all had unique things that brought us to like the VR space, right? And that's a uh, that's awesome. Um, so all right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pop into my first question here. Um, so the very first thing um, is how much crossover you guys seen uh, from like real world athletes. So in other words, like people who are like pretty serious at the game into each of the apps, right? So like uh, for walkabout, it could be like, hey, is there like a Tiger Woods out there practicing his putt game, you know, or could there be? Uh, 
and walk about mini golf, right? Or even just for fun or casual, right? How much you've seen uh, real athletes, uh, you know, pick up the game? Uh, and Greg, if you want to go first again. Well, we are just beta testing right now, so we're not in the market yet. So it's it's, it's hard to give you um, a, a number. Um, but we do have, you know, lots of tennis players um, already testing it. Uh, and there's a huge crossover. Very cool. Yeah. And I think especially with VR motion learning, right? It's intended as a serious training tool. Yes. So that's the okay. intent. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, Alex, uh, I know uh, the 11 table tennis scene pretty well. Like we got um, pro uh, table tennis VR, right? Like a lot of the players in 11 table tennis are actually ranked in, in a couple of the divisions in Europe, right? Right. So, um, yeah, so what happened is like, I think for a long time, I was one of the only high level, high level because I'm still semi-pro, like I'm second national division with like three divisions above me in Spain. Well, actually two were this year. Um, so we're not seeing Timo Ball in it yet and the really, really big stars. They were actually talking to them already, right? So, but I see like a lot of people on my level that are actually playing every weekend, they're playing leagues and in, in, in higher levels. And actually you could get, I, I sometimes get paid as well, depending on the economic yeah. uh, status of the world. Um, so it's like it's like in the beginning of pro, there's there's already a couple of, of people. And since we have like a, a worldwide audience, um, that really helps, right? So maybe there's one person like, like I am uh, from Belgium or maybe two that have uh, this level, but then you have two people in Poland and you have uh, a couple of people in in Australia, actually, uh, a couple of our best players are actually tennis players. So there might be some crossover with Gregory's game soon. As yeah. Well. Um, and then you have a really good player in Japan, in Brazil, you know, and in the end, you have a top 20 that is kind of filled with, with decent players. Now, if you have to compete with like the elite of the elite, like you always have to think like they have to like we are kind of building towards what Gregory is starting with, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted it's first a game, getting better, better, more, 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 more of a simulation all the time. And at some point, we hope to reach a, a level that it that it can be used with all the, how do you say it? You can get you can get to see all the details of all your strokes and and work on that, and you can play against yourself and all that stuff. That's stuff that's being worked on, but it's being worked towards. It's still a small team, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not jumping in in it from from that same perspective, but that is kind of. Uh, the future we're trying to go to and right now things since things are picking up we're talking to table tennis uh, daily for example which is like a, they are the ones that uh well dan from table tennis daily yeah he, he comments on on he's a real life video. commentator yeah exactly he, he right. just did a super good video yeah um, exactly he had a big impact as well yeah. yeah it yeah i know a lot of players and and table tennis real life table tennis pretty big in eastern europe right uh also yeah yeah, and then of course, uh, but China is like the dominant place, right? Uh, yeah. For table tennis, those players are amazing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know like Adam Bobro, right? Like he's stuck, he's in Taiwan at the moment, right? Yeah. Um, but that's given him a lot of opportunity to just like train with like national teams, right? So, um, table tennis players are picking it up, but mostly in Europe, I think they are. They are, and even even for example, a player like Timo Ball which I don't mm -hmm. know if you know him, but he's like one of the biggest players of all time. Uh, he has his own coaching uh, channel mm -hmm. on YouTube and he has responded in the comments as well on, on this game and he's interested in trying it out as well. And I mean, he's he's been top 10 for, I don't know how long, for years and years and years. Very, very cool. Yeah. And then um, Lucas, I uh, I know that like the hardcore like VR competitors, uh, like Inner, mm -hmm. Inner Princess have jumped into it. Have you seen anybody that's like a, a real life golf player pick up walkabout yet? You know, I don't know. I, I'm sure that there are some, but they at <laughs> least haven't necessarily sort of reached out or been super active on the discord. We've also, the, our game has only been out for less than six months now. So yeah. it's still sort of like, it's still kind of growing and sort of finding that, that audience. But there's a lot of, I think that a lot of the, the pros that, that we have in game are mostly ones who have sort of, um, kind of mastered it sort of like within VR. They're not necessarily mm -hmm. sort of like, there is actually like some professional mini golf tournaments. Okay, and, right. and yeah, but it, it's definitely, I don't, just if you were to look at like the number of players, I don't know that there's anywhere near, it, there's nowhere near the number of players who are playing table tennis and, and uh, 
what, what would the opposite of table tennis? Full tennis? Full, yeah, I guess you yeah. <laughs> full tennis. Court tennis. Yeah. yeah, full court <laughs> tennis, tennis. Yeah. table tennis, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so I also don't know. I know that there there is like in real life there is like prize money, but I don't know if there's actual any, um, I don't know if there's any like actual like full pros who are like making their, their living doing it. It's probably more semi-pro. Yeah. Um, folks like that. Well, I know um, for uh, mini golf specifically, there's that show, uh, oh, holy moly. Even, yeah. Holy moly. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, and so there actually is like a mini golf scene, right? Yeah. Um, and so that's, it's, it's good. Um, but that's kind of the appeal of mini golf, right? Uh, is, is like casual. It's fun. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely more casual. And I think that mm -hmm. that's the, that is the nice thing about, um, mini golf in particular for VR is that even like when you're in, even if you're in a tournament, you're still ultimately playing against yourself. You know, you mm -hmm. could, you having a good game does not necessarily require the other players to have a bad game. Yeah. Who wins at the end of the day, you know, you could still beat your best score and not necessarily win, but I would think that you'd probably still feel pretty, pretty happy about that. So that's been sort of a nice thing that sort of allowed people who are more serious that they can, someone who's very serious can go in and like really try to top their best round, even while they're playing against someone who is, you know, who's just trying to get in the hole without hitting the, the stroke limit. So it's, yeah. it's a pretty, it's a very wide uh, range of, of people playing it. Have you, have you had anybody be like, wow, I never knew I liked mini golf until they picked up uh, walkabout. I feel like, I feel like you have to have a very cold heart to not love mini golf. <laughs> yeah. you, I, you're um, probably fundamentally a broken person if you don't. Love I, I agree. Golf. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> there's this place in Utah and Provo, Utah County, it's called Trafalgar, right? Uh, shout out to those guys. Hope they're doing well. Um, but that was like, that was like the default date place as like yeah. a 16 year old. Cause it was cheap and it was fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh -huh. yeah, you're a fundamentally broken person if you don't like mini golf. Yeah. And especially yeah. because like, I mean, the great thing about VR, a lot of the other things in terms of like, you're not like whenever I go to a course, like you're always waiting on the group in front of you. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of those other things. So I think that there's some benefits to playing in VR, but I'd actually be kind of curious to find out if some people have gone, cause I know if several people on our discord have mentioned like, Oh, I finally went real life mini golfing yeah. for the first time in a while. And I wonder if that's actually sort of like, I don't know that we would necessarily be taking people away from the real life mini golf courses of anything. I feel like a mm -hmm. lot of them are then like, Oh no, now I want to go play real mini golf. So yeah. Yeah. Hopefully sure. especially soon with like all the, hopefully fingers crossed, like all the lockdowns ending. And I know there's yeah. a lot of places out there like LB, like location-based entertainment and mini golf. They're doing a lot of precautions already. Yeah. But hopefully the spring and summer is really awesome. Right. So yeah, yeah. theoretically. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you, you gotta like walk, you gotta like mini golf and walk about mini golf. That's uh, kind of like, Hey, do you like dogs or not? Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, all right, so on to the next question, um, which is a, like a good segue, right? Um, you know, there was actually like one really interesting study uh, for like 11 table tennis in particular, where they did take like beginners in 11 table tennis and um, they played enough that they, they tested them before and after and they found their real life uh, table tennis game improved merely by playing the VR version. Um, so that was a study of Australia. Pretty neat. Um, you know, for people who are using uh, like VR to train for their real sports, like what benefits are they seeing? So maybe Alex will go with you first. And it's a, a little yeah. Bit so I know of that study as well, and it's a little bit funny to see, of course, because uh, they're doing it as 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 uh, how do you say protected as possible. Like just try the game and then get better. Like. There was, I think there was coaches in there as well, in a way. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, what I've been doing myself is, for me, for me personally, of course, it's not uh, statistically measurable, I guess, ex except maybe in my results. But I've used it for the last two, three years to train. And I've had weeks that I couldn't train in real life, and I would play league matches, and I would be, play better than ever. Nice. And I've also had a, a child that almost came, came up and came in. Uh, and um, while he was small and i was taking care of him while he was sleeping i could keep training right and sure I keep my i could keep my level up and actually i i while i was taking care of him i was still playing uh, competition and i played my highest level so um 
that's like, like I was I was playing nine years in second division, and then the year that he was born was actually also the year of the lockdown when the lockdown started. But uh, we were set to go to first division, right? So that's so I cool mean, to hear. It was like yeah. a training tool. It actually like upped your real life game. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I, I almost kind of feel like table tennis is almost in some ways sort of the the perfect thing because the weight of the paddle is almost identical to weight of the mm -hmm. controller. And even when you hit a ping pong ball, like there's not like a resp you know, enough response from your paddle that it's really going to fundamentally change how you're doing it. I mean, I know that's one of the things that we always run into is that if people are just putting with just a controller, they can flick the wrist as opposed to do using right. proper form. And so that yeah. seems to be one of the things that determines whether that skill translates into real life or not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's much cool. it's a lot uh, closer. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, because with the Oculus controller, it's actually almost to the gram, like somewhat similar uh, in weight, right? Uh, some players want to modify mm -hmm. it slightly, right? Because I know, and not a super pro in this, but usually, like if you're doing a heavy, uh, it's around 200 grams, right? And the Oculus the adapter, yeah, yeah, with the adapter, right? That's and so the Oculus controllers, oh there. sweet, yeah. yeah. But the adapter is for real serious players, right? And you can actually play yeah, with that. I'll just, and I'll just grab it. Oh, that'd be rad. Yeah, show, show that. Um, and Greg, that's actually, yeah, let's let's take a look at this. So that's Using that's props. the adapter. Um, and actually, people... I, I put real rubbers on there as well, which is like the latest version. Yeah, because if <laughs> the feeling on, yeah. on your finger, like it really helps. And I actually noticed today, because it's the first time I tried it today, yeah, that it helps with the uh, the haptics as well. Like I feel them more because this is uh, like a softer tissue. I don't know exactly how that okay. works. Okay, but uh, yeah, it feels way more real. And That's I, so cool. You can see that I, I removed the cap, right? Yeah. That's because of the weight. The thing that you were saying, right? You want to yeah. have the, the least weight possible, and then also the the lanyard. I had to remove it as well because it will just be flopping around, and it's also extra weight. Yeah, so you got the weight down, you got the rubber. That is very realistic. And then this, uh, is, this is 186, and I think 186. 186. So you note down to the exact gram on there. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Um, man, this is like show and tell. Let's uh, let's see everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So uh, yeah, uh, Lucas is muted stuff. Oh yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. I was just like, yeah, this is this is one that someone in our community had come up with. There's actually a couple of them out there, but yeah, it does <laughs> really sort of add to the. The realistic. Um, I think the one other thing, though, is that when you're dealing with a real life putter, is that there is a very small sort of sweet spot in it, and so I think that's one of the other one of the other things that you kind of have to get used to if you're dealing with real life. But yeah, oh for sure, and uh, that adapter is pretty cool. Uh, it's fairly close, but as we know, like serious people like modify it, like Alex and everybody. So I'd actually really like to to try one of those. I need just need to 3D print it out or just something. So and then. Yeah. Uh, then Greg, um, I know you guys are super serious with like vibe trackers and everything like that, but you, it looks like you have that there too. Yes, well, you, you, you do can play with the controllers, that's, that's for sure. Um, but what we are having right now is, you know, this is a, a tennis racket. We, we adapt the, the HTC tracker, the, the new tracker, which is far smaller and lighter on the racket to, to, to track the racket. But still, you know, you have 20 grams more on the racket, which is for a real tennis player, a difference, you know, and it's not it's it's not as good as a real racket. So we are developing together with our partner Snowboard a VR racket, and we will oh, have in awesome. the frames, we will have in the frames uh, the tracking um, okay. um, incorporated, and on the handle there will be the haptical device so that you feel every time you strike the ball you have the feeling as in in real life yeah. because our our intention is to be as close to reality as possible because our end game is to to have the perfect swing the perfect stroke and for that you need to have a, a racket which is one to one the exact racket in as in real life yeah is that actually a prototype there uh is that like got yes. a little few trackers yes. on it as i see on the edges Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is, and we're this is in development, and we we still need another six to nine months until we oh we're sure yeah. with the, with the racket. That's but that's the that's course. the goal. Yeah. That's 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 killer. Um, and so, yeah, because um, with that counterweight on the end, and then adding that, that's like a special VR racket, but as close to real life as possible. Amazing. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, they, All right. I just yeah. want to mention as well, they, they used to have these um, versions with the puck as well uh, for, for the Vive. Mm -hmm. But uh, people that had them, they stopped using them because of tracking issues. And I think as a developer, you can work around them and you can, in this case, it was Steam. So I imagine that you're working a lot on that as well. But uh, developer hasn't gotten around into it yet. And a lot of people left them as well because the tracker itself doesn't have haptics, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, it didn't have haptics. And since most people now are on the quest, at least for our game, uh, it makes sense to try to integrate all of that in there. And at least me personally, I'm really looking forward to maybe one day Facebook opening up uh, the world of controllers, right? Because right now oh, it's sure. controller yeah. and that's it. People are taking it apart and taking the battery out, putting it in the handle. They're doing a lot of crazy stuff. But like to see an official table tennis bat with really good haptics, that would be like ideal. And then you have a standalone headset, standalone bat, like it would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, some of that stuff almost existed in like rudimentary form for like Wii Sports, I think, back in the day, right? Like Nintendo made a few haptics, but nothing serious, right? Like VR right. represents an opportunity to do it right um, and much more realistic than people would think. And as a developer, I'm just sort of like, that sounds so awesome. And at the same time, so such a nightmare to just like, oh, <laughs> now there's 30 for. different people who have their own their own putter rigs and you got to support uh -huh. all of them and yeah, troubleshoot all of them. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. the 3D yeah. printed. I mean, there's so many 3D printed versions and also like official ones, like official, semi-official because in VR, for example, they made their own without mm -hmm. contacting the developer. And then all of a sudden, like he also has to add that to the game, like the, the position and everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's playing a little bit of catch up with uh, everything that's been developed. I know. I was chatting with Roman, the developer, yesterday, and he says that like most players can't describe like how the physics should work because they, they're real life players, right? But they don't they can't translate it from physics into code and back again. Um, so most of the time he just like improves it, puts out a beta, and then he's like, "Does this feel more realistic and more like yeah, real life?" It's, it's it's super crazy. Like, cause I had that with him a couple of times. I'm like, "No, no, no, really. Mm -hmm. This like if like I know what you're trying to say, but it feels very important." And then he yeah. says, like, mm, "Let's try this." And then we try it, and it's like, "Yeah, this is better." And then it's something totally different that he changed. And now something really important that he's working on. I just he has a team working on it now. Is just a sound, mm -hmm. and it seems so silly, but having the right sound will make all the difference. Because sure. We, like table tennis is a very precise, fast sport and you take everything into account, just to, the sound of the ball touching mm -hmm. and, and how it sounds. And like when, when you play harder or when you play softer, it all depends. It makes it easier to read the game as well, but also will give you more feedback. Like you think yeah. you're feeling what you're actually hearing, you know, sometimes yeah. it's very, it comes it's down very to like easy. the thickness of the rubbers and things like that, you know, yeah. so makes sense. I like the same, the same with tennis. If you hit on the on the sweet point of the of the racket, it has a different sound as you hit it on the frame um, or elsewhere, and it's it, it's the combination of the sound and the feeling which which makes the whole sensation. That, yeah, that's so interesting. And a and a real life athlete could immediately tell if they picked it up if the sound was slightly off, right? Yes, well, they absolutely. don't know it's a sound. Well, they hear that the sound is not the same, but they will think there's something wrong with the haptics or with the tracking. Sure. Yeah, but it's actually the sound, and that's just, that's, I mean, the way that stuff shifts. Like you think you're doing one thing, and you think it's mm -hmm. because of one thing, and then it's something totally different. Yeah, that's just that's just amazing to realize, and it also gives us as real life players a lot more information and how we actually process all that data and where we can maybe improve, even though it seems very niche. Um, at at a, at a certain level, that's what you're working with, so it's it's very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, I got a, a question on a slightly different uh, tack, and this is just one we ask in almost all of our panels. Um, so are people using your game to like work out, get physical activity, um, you know, or the respective app, uh, you know, what, what's your, what's the fitness potential and, and Greg, maybe we start with you for there first. Well, fitness is, is one issue, but the, the, the biggest issue is actually training and, and, and matching, um, because, you know, what we can see is you, you can do technical training, you can do mental training you can do strategic training tech you know um all, all kind of all, all kind of different training sessions um in vr and you can do it very well because you can you can uh do the same training sessions over and over again until you're really perfect and and the second issue is you know matching playing your friends online playing tournaments um that's the that's the fun part and the, the competing part which is which is the fun and all together if you put it together it makes you fit, right? So sure. it's a, 
so it's a it's a it's a correlation. Yeah, I guess um, Greg, probably most of your beta testers are pretty fit already, is my guess, right? Yes, we are targeting the the real tennis players. Mm -hmm. um, they are fit already. They are playing tennis, and what they want to do is they want to do you know some homework at home. They want to they want to um, um, do some exercises at home. They want to play their friends. They want to uh, join tournaments. Um, it's a complementary uh, application to the real tennis. Sure. Yeah. All right. No. Very good. Um, Lucas, I I like walkabout mini golf. I can't say it's like a extreme cardio workout. I mean, standing. <laughs> yes, it's 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 most good. people are standing. Although you can play sitting, and there's a lot of people yeah. who play sitting as well. So yeah, no, I I definitely don't think that people are using it as a workout. I think there's a lot of other benefits that are sort of side benefits. But yeah, I don't mm -hmm. I don't think exercise is necessarily one of them. Yeah, I mean, it's so funny because uh, people in VR sometimes make games like workout games, like in mm -hmm. Skyrim. Like some people jog in place. There's a mod, like mm -hmm. where you swing your arms and they go jogging in Skyrim. Yeah. So maybe some people like jog around the Arizona course, right? I don't know. I could, I could see like because we are working on smooth locomotion and a couple of different things. Mm -hmm. So I could see like, I mean, theoretically, if you've got a whole gymnasium or something, you could probably play one of the courses and actually physically walk around it. Um, <laughs> so but cool. uh, but yeah, that that actually would be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, but yeah, no, I, I don't think that. Yeah, that that uh, there's a whole lot of athletic. Uh, I shouldn't say athletic. There's not a whole lot of um, yeah workout potential with us. When when you release a Steam version, be prepared for the jogging course. Yeah, uh, we should try yeah. that but with the yeah the arm movement. I know exactly what you're talking about with that, and see yeah. how, so how well how well that works. Because yeah, a lot of people have said that they really do like just the the sensation of walking around mm -hmm. the courses. So yeah, that's cool. No no golf carts here. So uh, it's, it's funny. Um, and then Alex, uh, yeah. I feel like table tennis like scales. Like if you're a really casual player and you're not very good, it's not like much of a workout. But if if you're like an amazing like top ten Olympic like person who's playing on the national team in China, like you're in crazy good shape, right? There's something in between there, yeah. Like it, yeah, <laughs> it picks up a little bit faster. Than that. I just wanted to say about walk about mini golf. Mm -hmm. um, like lots of the times, I I just don't have the energy to play table tennis, and it's the first game that I play. Oh I'm yeah, there, and I mean the focus and everything, and it's one of the most social apps as well. VR is, and uh, table tennis is also very fo um, social in a way because you, you interact a lot, you can mm -hmm. discuss what you're doing. Yeah. But walkabout mini golf, like I have a friend that has my quest one now and we only play walkabout. Just that's, instead of having a call, we just go into walkabout, talk a little bit, play, play some golf, like mini golf. It's, it's, it's very nice. So I, that's just, that's absolutely what we found as opposed to the fitness size sort of like people using it for a social hangout and while yeah you because you you can also hang out while you're playing table tennis but you tend to talk more between the things no, and there's a little on, less honestly of a honestly if they would like there's no doors in 11 right now that's that's like a running joke a little bit mm -hmm. but um if there would be a door and it would go straight into walkabout <laughs> a lot of people will just walk through back and forth because it's like it's a perfect thing to do. Like when you're getting tired, you just want to talk a little bit more. Just go to walkabout, and then uh -huh. maybe you want to play again. Go back. Like, we'll have to come up with yeah the 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 magic portal between the two. We'll we'll talk about exactly. that offline. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe Facebook will make that horizons right. Like yeah, you can really walk directly from the lake with table tennis to walkabout. Um, and to come back to the the workouts, uh, honestly, myself. I work out in there. So what I used to do mostly was uh, combine it with other uh, games as well to mm -hmm. to not be working specifically on 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 only table tennis moves. So I would play um, Thrill of the Fight, for example, as well. Yeah, to warm good, up because it's two minutes and you're totally warm, right? But then when the ball launcher became more useful and I I was able to create my own drills, I I almost only played in uh, in eleven and, and and got warm in eleven. And nice. what you're saying is well, like I created I. I'm probably mostly known for creating those drills and sharing them. And a lot of people have used them. And a lot of people, compared to 300,000 people that have the game, maybe 1,000 or 1,500 have even heard of my drills. But um, that's that's how most people know me, I think. And there's like basic drills and advanced drills. And even the basic drills, I made them like I made them for basic club players. So when somebody who doesn't know table tennis goes in and he tries them, he might be a little bit frustrated but he gets more respect for what it means to play real table tennis, right? So he's looking at a slow version of, of what real table tennis players do and mm -hmm. trying to adapt. And I, I've seen 
and this is this is one of the most amazing things i i've given class into classes to like two or three people that came to me and i and they said they never played in real life before right and i start training i always try to go over all the basic strokes in the beginning to make sure i if i need to correct something anywhere and they start playing and i'm like okay i can correct something but this doesn't this doesn't feel like a beginner at all and then i ask them like how come you're this good already and then they tell me they just saw my video used my drills and yeah. looked a little bit at other youtube videos to see the body movement a little bit more and everything and it's just crazy how much they can do on their own just in the game with the drills and because if you go and play with your friends on youtube and you and like you are your friends at home and you watch youtube you're never gonna get to that level never on your own yeah so it was very very crazy to see that well i know um one thing i was chatting about uh, with roman the developer yesterday was that like in theory, like let's say that like you really struggled with a certain serve or a certain shot, right? And your opponent was always scoring on you uh, with that one. In VR, you can actually theoretically replay that shot yeah. until you get better. Yeah. I guess, um, Greg, that that might be perfect for uh, your motion learning, right? Um, well, absolutely. You know, um, I think that's the the real purpose of VR is you know this strategic tactical training the mental training the technical training i do not see the workout as one of the the main goals of, of vr because don't forget you have the headset on you're sweating uh, mm -hmm. that's not comfortable uh, if you do you want to make some physical workouts you're not going to do it in vr I, I don't i don't believe you know workout and, and vr is not not 100 fit and 100 match but everything else you know training learning um matching gaming competing i think that's vr yeah uh yeah. i yeah i think i think so on both yeah i think i think i'm a little bit maybe for tennis is a bit different because um if you would train in vr i imagine the leg work is less right yeah so in in because you, you don't have the benefit of a, a huge court yet unless exactly I mean, with the Vive trackers and HTC, you actually could set up a pretty big court with the Maybe, yeah. we, we can set up. We can set up the full court. Yeah, but if you but if you're in your living room, you know, you don't have the space to run around, mm -hmm. um, and no. you don't have the space to run around and hold a racket and swing a racket um, 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 sharply. You're gonna ruin everything around you. So um, <laughs> yeah, rip your TV. Yeah, but that's that's so, like. The way I have to disagree there is because uh, 11 table tennis, it's been there and I've used it that way. And yes, the sweat and everything, it's its a bit of an issue. We have a player that's ruined maybe like four or five quests already, just <laughs> breaking and sweating. <laughs> so I'm just saying like they're doing it. It doesn't matter if it breaks anything. People are just yeah. doing it. And I do it as well. And I don't see it like if I could train more in real life, I would probably do it as well. But I would still like because in 20 minutes in VR, I can do what I can do in two hours in real life, right? So yeah. if I can warm, like I actually, I've used the headset uh, before league matches to warm up as well. So I just put it on, I focus, uh, I do like certain drills with the ball launcher. Maybe I play a little bit against the AI to get into a groove of like a real match situation. And then I play in real life. And um, that's just warm up, of course. But I've also played like really, really heavily. And it's it's allowed me to keep, to keep up. And yeah, it's the thing that is most bothersome because when I know where I am and I have enough space, I, I move quite well. Mm -hmm. But I notice a lot of people, because of the, they have like a box on their face and they don't see their feet, they move a little bit slower. And sure. when they, they, they lean a bit more when they go to deep four and instead of moving their feet, because they're not sure, they don't want to accelerate too much toward a wall or something, right? Yeah. But if you do have the space, I've also played in, in like table tennis spaces where I, have, I don't have to worry about any walls. It's so much fun. You can fly all over the place. It's also, of course, a quest without any yeah. any cables and everything. It's it's just great. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna shift a little bit. So I just have probably just one more formal question on my side, and uh, my challenge is like, hey, like in in two or three sentences, like what peripheral or what headset advance would you like to see the most to advance the game you're working on, um, and then after that. Um, we actually have a pretty active like Twitch chat. Um, this is the notice for the Twitch chat that um, if you have a question, uh, start thinking of one now because uh, we'll probably ask like a couple questions live here. So, um, so yeah. So for everybody here, what headset technology advances need the next like five years? Like if you had to pick one, 
what would it be? And uh, Lucas, we'll start with you. Um, I think for our game specifically, it would be most just rendering and processing power because mm -hmm. our courses are very large and we're having to compute physics accurately over this entire course. Um, yeah. While that's probably not as important for the other guys, we're the irony is, is that even though it's just mini golf, we are pushing the GPU and the CPU Serious, to yeah. absolute max all the time because you can see the entire course from one end to the other. So that's definitely the thing that would help us the most. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Quest 3 is in development, right? So hoping that semiconductor shortage gets solved, right? <laughs> These mobile chipsets keep on getting better. Great. Great answer. Solid. Um, Alex, what would you think, you know, technical wise, uh, you know, like what would you think is needed for table tennis to push that boundary of physics just a little bit more? Well, because it's such a precise sport, I think the most important thing, and we've already noticed because I've been in here for a while with different iterations of, of headsets, the most important thing is, uh, is tracking and tracking lag. Right? Okay, sure. So that's just, I mean, we went from 40 milliseconds delay to 30 milliseconds delay with face sync. It was a massive difference. Like it, it's an exponential difference. If we can go to 25 or even 20, like yeah, my everything, memory. all the physics, because you think like the physics are separate from, from uh -huh. the tracking, right? Because that is just there, but everything just feels and works so much better, the better, uh, the tracking is, it's just, uh, yeah. it, it has such a big impact. It's, it's quite crazy. So anything that can improve on that and also the prediction of it, because we have uh, Roman right now, he's working actually mm -hmm. this weekend on improving on Facebook's own um, prediction, because sure. it's creating a bit of a skew when you play and he already had a, he already fixed part of it. So when it, once he gets out with that, that's, that's going to be like already crazy as well. But yeah. anything that improves tracking and lag. Yeah. Yeah. With table tennis, it's, it's crazy. Cause like even on the link cable, like those added extra milliseconds of latency, like make a difference in the physics through a link cable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, so the Oculus or steam native versions perform better even because of that. Um, all right. And then Greg, what, what one advance would you really like to see, uh, to advance, uh, VR motion learning? Well, I really want to underline what Lucas and Alex have, have said, you know, um, that's absolute, um, right. What, what, what both have said, but I want to add one, one more issue. And that is, I would like to see a, a very good and, and very convenient and 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 less expensive outside in tracking mm. because all the new headsets are inside out and i think the future is a lot in outside in i, I don't know alex about table tennis you're you're using inside out right so you're not you're not capturing the the, the full body you know yeah, for ten ten tennis, yeah. you need a full body you know from the knees to the shoulders and 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 everything that you really need a full body tracking and with all the new headsets which are inside out you cannot capture that uh, i that's that's one of the things that i was going to mention as well i that's that's another thing like in not not a outside in tracking but something i don't care where it comes from but some way of body tracking it might be that it just has like a camera and it follows you a little bit like uh the, well that's how that life, life set yeah <laughs> exactly so you can see your feet but also right because that's going to start a whole other thing of lag, right? Because right. the battle is just one one thing, one controller. If your whole body is being tracked, like it will put more pressure on the headset as well. But I would love it because I don't want to go back to cables or even have it needing to need a computer because just imagine right now, you want a table tennis table, don't buy it anymore. Just buy a Quest 2 and <laughs> buy the game. It's cheaper. It's yeah. cheaper. And you can play <laughs> with anybody. Very cheaper, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard but to do with it. Yeah. You don't need any balls, right? You, you and you don't have to pick up balls, and you don't have to buy any balls, right? You don't have to pick up balls. I mean, <laughs> yeah. honestly, that's 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 why in twenty minutes you can do something that you can do in in two hours normally. Even with a ball launcher, if you have it in real life, it's super annoying because you will miss. You have to go find a hundred balls on the floor <laughs> and then start over. This one just keeps going, right? Yeah, no end. yeah. automatic ball retriever. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, we have a question. This one's for Alex. Uh, and this is, I think Ian, um, he says, I joined expecting to see a cat and it turns out you're a regular man. I feel cheated. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was, I was <laughs> giving it away in my previous videos as well. Sometimes you saw a flash of a bearded guy doing something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 
I could say that I'm actually a cat inside, just acting like a human. That's what I usually do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think he got me this time. Yeah. Well, that's your avatar on 11 table tennis, right? As a cat. And then on YouTube, you're a cat. So I mean, we, we didn't have that many options back then. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, we still don't uh, because it's not the priority first it's physics, physics, physics. And, uh, and I mean, we were, we were working, they were working on integrating Facebook mm -hmm. avatars, but people are not convinced of those either. Yeah, Actually, I think I heard today in another uh, panel as well of yours, how important avatars li are and like a uh, little bit creating of a stardom of, of players. And I think the same. So I think it's very important to have a specific way of working with avatars at some point if you want to make yeah. it back into a big esport. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that, to that as well. And I hope I can remain a cat, but maybe with a torso as well. And, <laughs> like a cat, a cat man. Yeah, um, I'm seeing for that question. <laughs> Yeah, that's a solid question. Um, all right, so we, we got a we got another question here. This one is a little more on the casual side, right? Like, uh, and Lucas, you're developing a lot, so this is probably something you think about. Um, Henny, he asked, like, hey, in terms of game development, what's the right but balance between having a solid core game that's as true to life as possible versus having bonus mini games and special fun things that only are for the VR experience? So. I mean, I think I think it's definitely a balance, and I think that depends very largely on the game that you're doing. I know we've been adding more of those sort of bonus things just because we've found that since for every course we're creating this whole little miniature world, and it's so much about the location that you're in with that, it's there's some things that are very easy to add in, like the lost balls that we did that sort of it adds a lot to the experience without necessarily becoming a major development thing. Um, so I think a lot of that just comes down to the game you're doing and sort of like if it's if you can add things that are fun and build on the experience that you have. But in many cases with that, we're targeting more. Of, yeah, it's more of the casual thing, like the lost balls or the fox hunts, which are like treasure hunts. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Basically, that's taking advantage of the fact that we've already built out this this miniature world and just encouraging people to explore it, which is also you could say that's a big part of miniature golf is sort of exploring these courses and everything. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's the that's the coolest thing. I have a bunch of friends that use Walkabout just to like meet up with like they ha play a round of golf with their dad who knew, lives in another state, right? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. And so that's awesome. Um, all right. So and then uh, Greg, I know uh, VR Motion Learning is coming out later this year. Like, where can people find out more about VR Motion Learning? Um, you know, what what can you say about what's in development there? Well, we are beta testing right now. Um, um the, the the ball machine the the, the playing one to one against uh, against others so that's that's already better testing and and I'm uh, we're welcoming um, anyone who wants to better test with us um so that's uh, just just register please under uh tennis minus esports.com mm -hmm. um, that's where you can register uh we're gonna market launch in in June great and and what is in development is not only the racket as you have seen it's also the whole similarity modeling thing where you can compare your forehand against the ideal forehand or your backhand against Roger Federer's backhand and you get to your ideal technique uh, that's in development that's coming next year um, and year by year we're going to improve the whole system we're, we're going to have a computer soon that you can play with um, we're going to have tournaments we're going to have the super league so we're going to have lots, lots of cool stuff, stuff coming yeah, a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right. And then, Alex, um, for people find you on your website, uh, in the Discord, where can people get coaching? Um, yeah, well, if they can go through my website, they can go through the Discord. Um, yeah, it's not only with me, of course. Right now, I'm I'm officially creating video content for the game. For, yeah, uh, for with comments. Table Tennis Daily and a few others. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm helping them out as well when they need, a, when they need it. Um, uh, yeah, for the, for the, yeah, you'll be helping us this well. weekend yeah. for this Saturday, uh, for, for gold tier, you'll be helping to spectate. So, yeah. uh, for everybody watching the finals are this Saturday. So yeah. it'll be awesome. That's uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, all of that is just a lot of fun. If, if it's about the game itself, like you, if you talk to Roman just a little bit, you know, how many plans he still has for the game. Yeah, so, I, so many. Yeah. I, I really want to see what it's like in, yeah. Like, I want to see 10 years into the future because I think all the ideas that he has is he has he needs time to to work on all of them yeah but, uh, yeah it's it's gonna be amazing quite sure yeah and Lucas if people really want to get plugged in the walkabout mini golf community where should they go 
Uh, well, yeah. So just if you haven't found the game, walkaboutminigolf.com. Um, that actually has a link to the Discord and all the different places. So that's probably the best place to start. But if you need Discord directly, it's just discord.mightycoconut.com. Yeah, because you guys have a lot of cool stuff upcoming too, right? And Yeah, we're very actively developing. I mean, uh, we're adding a lot of features, but probably the biggest thing that we're spending the most time on is more courses and more platforms. So, so yeah, yeah. We've, we've got, uh, I mean, we'll be on Steam before too long. I've learned not to commit to release dates because that always comes back to bite me. Yeah, but, uh, and remember for forever. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but we're working on Steam, and we also have the AR version, which will be very, very cool. Where you just you basically ah, the keep, AR version, yeah, yeah. Because we've got a without going too deep into it, we have a version that you play on the phone, but it's full crossplay. So if you someone doesn't have a headset, they're just on a phone. You can just putt like that, and you can play against someone in VR. So that's the other that's kind amazing. of big thing that we're working on. Yeah. Uh, next panel, we'll ask you more about the AR version. So. Yeah. Huh? All right, so I, um, I just wanted to mention the website because my, my website is one thing, but the website of eleven is elevenvr.com. Uh, you, you can find the Discord links, everything on there. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, all right, so we are wrapping up here because in five minutes um, we have uh, VZ Fit, uh, Real Fit, and VR Workout, uh, which can be moderated by Sonia Haskins, a VR Fitness Insider. So if you're hanging out on the Twitch channel, uh, take a quick break. Uh, come back in five minutes for that. Um, and thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, had a super solid experience. Thank, thank you, guys, the panelists. Um, thank you, uh, everybody in the Twitch uh, chat. Um, if This will be on live on Twitch, um, but if you want to catch us later, we'll rehost this all up on YouTube. Um, and I think that's it. So solid. Yeah, thanks awesome. a lot for having me. Thanks, everybody. Okay. All right. Nice. Hey, appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. All right. Bye.